here we have the footing complete and we're on to the framing for the building. So we started with setting a single truss to the correct dimensions and then we use that as a form or a template for the rest of them. And so we'd set the components on that initial truss and we would go around and use C clamps to clamp all the features together and then everyone could go around and set their brackets with all the screws and it took a few people to lift them up they're pretty heavy but that bottom plate around the perimeter of the building makes it very easy there's little stanchions on that and we're able to lift the truss and just set it right on top of those stanchions and after that I was able to go back and do the gable end framing myself pretty simple they're just square tubes that you put a bracket on and everything screws together and doing the gable ends did not take long at all The girts really stiffen up the building and I ran a string to make sure they all stay in line. You can see me using all of these straps and what I'm doing is getting the vertical level on the wall studs, basically the trusses. I'm, I'm pulling everything together and that would give me basically an extra set of hands to while I put the screws in the girt. I knew that everything was being held level vertically. So the door frame, I would have given myself a little bit more space on that. I, I tend to go a little too close on, on things and should have given myself an extra quarter inch or half inch of wiggle room, but the doors work. They went in and uh, they do work well, so I'm happy with that. Now the purlins on the roof were fairly straightforward. The hardest part was getting the string line to the other side for each of them, but here you see me trying. And once I had my string, it was just a lot of up and down on the ladder, but fairly easy. I did my best to double check the distances between the trusses so that I can do any last little manipulation to get them set properly. There is some flex to the truss until you start getting some of the purlins in place. And it's important to consider not having your purlins or girts end at the same point if they are the purlin or girt next to it. Another way of saying that is stagger the end points. So if you start at the front on one run of purlins, you might start at the opposite end on another. Just something to consider. Cutting the metal for the siding on the gable ends was not as bad as I thought it would be. They use a standard pitch and because you have a set distance or set width on your panel, I think it's three feet, three inches, you know exactly what you have to measure to get the right angle. And so you see us making the outline there and then doing the cut. And the circular saw you see me using has a ferrous metal blade on it, and it is by far the best way to get a clean cut. We tried uh, manual metal snips, uh, electric metal snips, an angle grinder, and that ferrous metal blade is well worth the cost. Here you see the, for us, what's the south side of the building, and we're putting up the side panels. And we ran into a problem where, despite having these as taut as possible, the front corner ended up with a larger gap so that the corner trim didn't actually fit. And what I mean by that is the corner trim would not go over the major rib at each corner. 
which is what it's supposed to do to prevent water from coming in. On the back corner, you'll see that everything ended up pretty tight and in a very good position and the original trim actually did fit over that corner. But VersaTube was extremely good to work with. We called them up, sent some pictures and measurements, and told them what we needed and they actually provided the trim at no cost. It could have very well been that the cold caused the metal to shrink slightly and over a 30 foot run we ended up roughly an inch short to a half inch short. It was such a bummer for, for so small of a, of a distance to have to go through the process of getting a new corner trim. They also sent us a new rake for the front and back gable ends, and that was just so that we would match. Um, the roof did end at the same point, so everything was lining up just right both the roof and the corners in the front were just short. Trim went up pretty easy. Not the best at cutting trim, but it worked out well and I've seen that it sheds water great. So we had to get this tarp. We've been fighting the weather. Uh, we started the framing late November and had this up for a few weeks and we'd have to come out and encourage the snow to come off of the roof because it would get pretty heavy and start ripping the tarp. But once we actually got to the point of having a clear day and a weekend to be able to do it, we were able to put the roof on and it went up pretty quick. It was uh, the first panel takes the most time and then after that it's it actually isn't too bad. I have learned a little bit watching some other metal installation videos, uh, metal roof installation videos since doing this project and the one thing I would have done a little bit better is to set an individual reference point and continue to work off of that all the way down the roof. What ended up happening is I was trying to average between top and bottom as much as possible because it wasn't perfect and it rarely ever is. And I think that just created more work for myself. The end product turned out very well. So most of the slop was uh, moved to the peak of the roof, which is covered by the ridge cap and the bottom edge of the roof had roughly a quarter inch fluctuation over the full 30 feet which really isn't that bad you can't see it from the ground but still we maintain a, approximately that two inch overhang and works well for shedding water so it's nice to see the building coming together you can see we still have the gravel inside. We still have to put the slab in place. The garage door we went with has a top row of windows to let additional light in. It's got a steel backing and it's insulated because we do want to eventually insulate the inside of the building. It's extremely quiet. We really like that garage door. Works very well and we haven't had any issues with it. Definitely changes the space once you enclose everything. So very exciting phase to the project. Now to the window frame. So we ended up putting the siding on prior to installing the windows themselves, which is slightly out of order. It's not a bad option. The reason we did it was due to the weather that we were fighting. If I had to do it again, I, would, I, I might do it the same exact way, to be honest. We were able to use the window frame as a guide for the cutout and the siding, which resulted in 
really a lot less measuring as we were putting the siding up. And all I had to do was remove one vertical and one horizontal portion of the window frame to be able to slip the flange on the window because it was a new construction window. So it has that flange, which I like. And I was able to slip that between the skin of the building and the outer side of the frame of the building by just removing that little vertical and horizontal. And it's very simple to put it back in place. So I actually didn't mind it too much and worked out pretty well. You can see me removing that horizontal and then the vertical for the window frame so that I can slip the window in. And I will say that I should have cut a little bit more, giving myself once again an extra quarter inch, half inch or so of wiggle room on the window. I always default to just go in tight because you could always make it bigger, but I ended up you know, just being a little bit too frugal with the material. So I, I could have definitely taken some more off and it would have made my life a little easier, but it's tight, it's done, and it looks pretty good. So I haven't had anybody either tell me that it looks bad or maybe they're just not being honest with me. I don't know. But no one said it looks like crap, so I'll take it. It's crazy to look back at what we started with in this old shed that was built in the mid-50s. Taking that out was a lot of fun. Digging was not fun. But the end result was worth it and very happy with the way the building turned out and the overall usable space that we have now. The puppies approve, so can't complain about that. They have watched the project from the beginning. So I hope you enjoyed this and have gotten some good information out of it. Thank you, and check out some of our other videos.